fair, spoiler-free reviews of the newest films. Vaughn on Movies. Brought to you by YoDigito.com. In Rise of the Planet of the Apes, James Franco plays, of all things, a scientist. He invents a drug to help fight Alzheimer's disease, and in Trials on Apes, comes to adopt chimpanzee Caesar, who shows remarkable intelligence, but just doesn't quite fit in with the human world. Cast out, Caesar plots an uprising. I'd like to thank TNT's Falling Skies for providing me this hat to eat. The world's toughest movie critic. There were plenty of red flags surrounding Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Let's take a look at the list. This really seems like a needless sequel, doesn't it? How many of these ape movies have we had? Do we really need to understand how the apes took over? I thought it was made quite clear. James Franco and scientists sound like oxymorons. CGI Apes by Weta Digital. Now this is most interesting because I never had a problem with the makeup and costume effects of the original or even the previous movie. Weta's work on Avatar is giving them a lot of billing in the promotional materials for this movie. But wouldn't it be more clear if we just said not from James Cameron? Let's be real, a special effects firm is not going to give the same work to just every director. And I've never seen a Navi before. So when I saw him in Avatar, I guess that's what a Navi looks like. When I go to the local zoo and I see a chimpanzee, I've got a pretty good idea what they look like. And you know what? They don't look like this. And lastly, Apes overtaking man. Yeah, right. You know what? There's these things called guns. And let me tell you what they do. They stop ape uprisings. This is very much a movie about a computer-generated chimp. And not James Franco. Thank God. The visual effects aren't perfect, but they don't distract from the empathetic narrative. Now, sure, CGI apes do have more agility than humans in costume, but I could always tell that I was looking at something that isn't real. It's an acceptable trade-off. There's a surprising amount of personality given to these CGI apes. And I'm not talking just about Caesar. There's at least four others who can be quickly identified. Now, there are some faults. Judging by the audience's reaction, I wasn't the only one in the theater wincing in agony as Caesar's intelligence granted him an ability the movie just hadn't quite earned. And the no-killing command seems rather PG-13 for a movie about apes overthrowing humanity. Thankfully, there's something else in store to help the apes inherit the Earth. Rise of the Planet of the Apes makes some allusions to the original, such as the name Bright Eyes. Thankfully, Marky Mark's 2001 remake goes completely ignored. There are some tidbits in the background that allude to a possible sequel. We overhear on the TV of a manned mission to Mars, and later in the film, a newspaper headline indicates they could be lost in space. I'm not quite sure where director Rupert Wyatt is taking this, but I can only pray that there is no plan to remake the 1968 original, as the twist is now completely invalid. I'm going to think of Rise of the Planet of the Apes as the direct prequel to the original, and it was much better than I had anticipated. I give it three out of four stars. I also want to take this moment to plug what I'm calling a new series. These spoiler-free reviews set you up with the whole weekend to see the movie I'm talking about. And then I can chime in later with what I call Spoiler Zone. 